So my name is Elizabeth Wells Tuning, and I just completed the MA in Cultural Heritage Studies here at the IOA. And I'm here to sort of give you the highlights from a case study that I did for my dissertation. Um, so I was investigating this question, how does engagement with mobile digital interpretation of archaeological sites change perceptions of the past? Thank you. And so a gross over oversimplification of that question would be, does smart interpretation via smartphones of archaeological sites work? And the case study that I used was an app produced by the Museum of London called Street Museum Londinium. Um, so how many people are familiar with the app? How many people have used it? OK, so a lot of people know about this app. Great. Um, so it was created by the Museum of London and the History Channel, and also in conjunction with um, Museum of London Archaeology and uh, a creative agency called Brothers and Sisters. I'm going to go through it really briefly, so if I miss anything that people from the Museum of London think is important, please add that in later. Um, so it was, it's an app that you use on your iPad or iPhone. It teaches you about Roman London. And it was designed to sort of follow on the heels of another app called Street Museum. Um, and it was supposed to be sort of a, a step up from Street Museum. I think it's really important uh, that people remember that they were designed as marketing tools first and legacy products later. And I don't want to knock marketing tools at all because that's very important. But as we look to Street Museum Londinium as a model for interpretation, it makes sense to keep in mind that people, they might have done things a little bit differently. Some things had the main purpose been as an interpretation tool. So the main interface for the app is what I like to call uh, this map interface. And so there are actually two maps. There's a map of Roman London and a map of modern London. And you can use that little slider at the bottom, and it will take you in between the two maps. And if you have it in the middle, you can see both maps. If you hit one of these pins, you're gonna, it's going to pull up content that is relevant to that pin location. So you might get an artifact pin like this. If you hit that history button, it's going to tell you a little bit more about the artifact. Or you might get um, some augmented reality or a video, depending on whether you're using it in situ and you've press the little 3D button to get the augmented reality. Um, so I should also mention that this was designed for use in the streets of London, but it also can be used remotely. There's a whole range of content that might come up, so I'm not covering it all. That's another example. Um, so as of August 2012, it had been downloaded 150,000 times, and those downloads predominantly came from Europe and North America. So this is how I evaluated it. I, I was looking at two different populations, so people that were called the organic users. These were people that came independently to the app, uh, independently from my study. And I reached out to them using an online survey and visitor survey at the Museum of London. So I asked people, have you heard of it? Have you used it? Great, please, can you take my survey? Um, the online survey didn't go as well as I planned, so I only got um, about 15 respondents with these two methods combined. So their responses were great in understanding the user experience, but it's too few to make any generalizations about the population that's using the app. So I don't have any good data on who it's reaching and also who it's not reaching. I also had a group of people called the recruited participants. These were friends, friends of friends, that I said, hey, will you spend 45 minutes with the app in the city of London or in Southwark and then can I interview you afterwards? Um, so for that population, I tried to exclude people that were experts or were archaeologists. And, but even, even if I did that, the people that participated in, as recruited participants were probably still a little bit more knowledgeable in terms of general archaeology and cultural heritage than uh, your average layperson. So I gathered a lot of information. I gathered basic demographic information. I also wanted to be able to contextualize the learning experience. So I asked them, what did you know before? Where did you learn it? Uh, I asked them questions about their experience with the app and if they liked certain features. And then I also asked them about what changes it had brought. So I asked them to self-report changes. Um, I didn't ask them, though, how did this change your perception of the past? because I figured that that would actually lead to a lot of just them looking at me blankly. So I asked um, a number of different questions. I asked 
Do you know more about Roman London? Do you understand Roman London better? The majority of people said yes to these questions. A few less felt like their understanding had changed, but still, it was a majority. Um, and I also asked the recruited participants, are you more curious about Roman London, and are you likely to act on that curiosity? And again, most of them uh, had said that their curiosity had increased, and the six people who were using it on their own <coughs> iPhone said, I want to use the app again, and I didn't ask them about that. So there was a strong motivation to use it again. And then I asked people, do you feel differently about London? I only asked this question to Londoners. This was interesting because the recruited participants, five of eight of them said, yes, I feel a stronger connection. I feel like I have a greater respect for the age of the city, responses like that. Only one of the seven of the organic users said that. This could be a complete fluke because the numbers are so small. But what's interesting to me is that these two populations randomly, I didn't plan this, use the application very differently. So the organic users tended to be remote users. They were using it from home, they were using it from work, and they didn't access a lot of multimedia. The recruited participants were using it in the streets of London, and they all accessed multimedia. So it could be a fluke. It also could be that those particular ways of using the app resulted in different effective, effective changes. So what did people say when, because I didn't just ask, did you learn more? I also asked them about what they learned. So the responses were very interesting. I asked both the recruited participants and the organic users, what was the most memorable thing you learned? The vast majority of these responses was the location of something. So they learned where a significant structure was, they learned that an artifact had been excavated here, but they weren't always saying specific artifacts. Um, they learned where visible remains were. That was overwhelmingly the most common response to that question. Um, and it becomes even more interesting when you ask people, why do you feel that you understand Roman London better? Because the majority felt that their understanding had increased. And people replied, it was also very geographical. They said, I understand it better because I know where things are in relation to each other. I understand about the, where it was and the size of it. So geographical, spatial, people were walking away with not just knowing where different things were, but they were beginning to be able to put it into a larger picture. So I think this tells us something really interesting about the potential power of apps on mobile phones because you, they were, the modern map was an interface that a lot of people were familiar with. It was Google Maps. And, and so the, it was a map that they were used to using to navigate through the city on a regular basis. And we've been able to give people site maps before and give people old maps, but mobile actually gives us for the first time the opportunity to be able to give someone an interactive map that they're encouraged to use throughout their visit to a site or to a historic city and also to be able to um, very quick, easily and quickly cross-reference that with um, a modern map that they're familiar with. So I think that that is um, the most important takeaway from what I learned is about the power of um, maps on mobile phones. I also briefly want to run through some of the responses to different features because they are interesting and they may have <coughs> Um, maybe good things to learn from for people that are trying to build apps to interpret the historic environment. So um, the map, map slider, very popular. What was very unpopular um, was, the, was the amount of information given for each pin. And I, I didn't ask people about that, so the fact that 9 of 11 recruited participants said to me, you know, I was really frustrated that I couldn't get any more information, that sort of is a, it shows you the strength of that sentiment. So if they were able to maybe easily link into um, what we just heard about earlier, you know, all of this information about objects or something else, that, I mean, that could be another opportunity to expand this mobile offering. And it also seems to be the expectation that that much would be available. Um, the responses to the artifact pins were interesting. So the artifacts were pinned approximately to near where they were found. Some people understood that connection. 
Other people were completely, they, they didn't understand it or they didn't know whether to trust it. So I had one person ask me, you know, was it a game? What was I supposed to make? Like that didn't make sense to me. Another person told me with great authority, I think it's highly unlikely that these artifacts were excavated here. This is my favorite though. This person said, the problem is that it is just a play. You have to trust the application. So he's suspicious of it. You have to trust it in that it is telling you that the item is in that place. And it became clear from further conversation with him that he interpreted the pins as saying the artifact is in the ground. Still. <laughs> and so it just shows you that this wasn't, it seemed clear to a lot of people, but for other people, they didn't know whether to trust it and they didn't know how to interpret it. Um, another interesting response was different responses to not being able to see something. So one thing that came up twice was the fact that the app leads you to, or there's a pin on Gutter Street or Gutter Lane that shows that there was a mural there. And I had two people tell me I was so frustrated because there was no mural there and I was just <laughs> looking at my screen. And you can contrast that though, there was another person who had a totally opposite opinion. This was a person that had done some excavation work. They weren't an archeologist, but they had experience with that world. And she thought it was great that you could see where these artifacts had come from. So how people respond possibly to a digital, digital object may be influenced by what they know and what they expect in terms of um, archeological objects and storage. Um, I wish that I could tell you great things about augmented reality. Unfortunately, most of the organic users didn't use it because they weren't using it in situ. They weren't using it where you're the, you needed to be for the augmented reality to happen. And it didn't really work or it wasn't, people didn't understand when they pressed the 3D button why it started showing them the ground. Um, so they were very, it didn't, I don't, so I don't have enough data, but I did have a few people come and tell me that they were confused as to why you had Roman people in front of a modern landscape. And when you think of it that way, it becomes clear, like they understood that that's where it was supposed to take place, but they didn't understand, you know, why is the Mithras ritual taking place in the street? And so that's interesting if we're going to keep using augmented reality, we need to pay attention to how their, basically their augmented reality literacy skills. How is this coming across? Does it make sense to them? Um, so my conclusions from, my main conclusions were that this shows us a lot of great power that there is to be explored in using um, maps um, for mobile interpretation and that we don't know enough about mobile games uh, about how people perceive augmented reality, and we need to study that to make sure that we can fully exploit them as interpretation tools. And before I end, I also want to pull up these. These are some other examples of interpretation of the historic environment. I think Rock Art Mobile Project is the only one that's truly archaeological. These are some other great examples. I highly recommend the ones that are starred. These are actually in the academic literature. And because I want to emphasize that the Street Museum Londinium app is a great thing for learning about some capabilities, but there are also all these other apps, well not all these other apps, there are some other ones that are also out there that can help fill out that picture of what these are capable of even more. Um, and so there's just one more slide. These are some other projects that are not in the literature, but they're also worth checking out. So that's that's all. Thank you very much for taking.